Hey, it's Vana, and welcome back to Let's Play The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, ladies and gentlemen. Fun fact, number one, I didn't, I for, totally forgot there's a unusual gem here. And number two, I always want to say just Let's Play Skyrim, but my mind just starts saying, or my mouth just starts saying The Elder Scrolls, and I have to go through the whole thing, and it's just, it's just a habit at this point. Anyways, uh, in the last episode, well, um... Cicero wanted us, well, the Night Mother wanted us to go to Valenrood and talk to Amand Motier, who, of course, we do not know, and we do not know where Valenrood is. Well, we technically do, now that Astrid told us, um, but Astrid told us to not do that, to do Nazir's contracts, and to disobey the Night Mother. That can't bode well. Um, but we also did do those Nazir contracts. We did two of them. We killed Hearn and Hurt. A couple of vampires, literally a couple of vampires, and we also killed Lorbuck, the worst bard in Skyrim. So let's turn these in. You're alive. Then I guess you haven't paid a visit to the vampire yet, huh? Oh well, that's where you're wrong. But thanks for the uh, thanks for the thing. No, what's the word? Every single time I do one of these, there's a word that just is like I just picture it as, like it's in a little hot air balloon and it just leaves. That's actually a web comic. That's what I. Well, that's why I am saying that. It's it's a really funny one. Maybe I'll link it if I can remember and find it. Um, but, like, it's like a word that just leaves out of the, my ear canal. It's just like, bye, see you later. Uh, thanks for the support. That'll have to do. Anyways, Lorbuck is dead. Wonderful. The only good bard is a dead one as far as I'm concerned. All that singing and mirth. Your payment, as per the usual. Hearn is dead. No sarcasm this time. You faced a vampire, and lived to tell the tale. Well done. And if you contracted Sanguinari Vampiris, be sure to get that taken care of, else you'll end up like our own Babette. Unless, of course, that was your goal all along. Here's your payment. Well, it might just be a goal. Are there any more contracts available? Well, aren't we the eager one? Sorry to disappoint, but there's nothing. Try me again later. Alright, let's take a look at our main quest. The silence has been broken. Astrid has agreed to let me see Amand Motier. By the way, she came around. I never got to that part. In the dungeon known as Valenrood, as commanded by the Night Mother. I'm to speak with Motier and find out what he wants. And obviously this is very, very, very interesting. Who is this man? It sounds like, uh, if, if you've played enough Elder Scrolls games, you can usually tell what the person is going to be, what race, based on their name. It sounds like this person is going to be an Imperial. And of course I know that, because I've done this already, multiple times. I've done the Dark Brotherhood, eh, I would say about three or four times, all the way through, maybe more. Um, but yeah, e even if I didn't, you can usually tell, oh boy, we have a long way ahead of us this time. Nothing! Don't you just love it when there's literally nothing around uh, your destination? Well, I guess the closest would be the White Run Stables? Jeez, because that other location might be like over a mountain and then it's not even worth it anyways. Um, but yeah, you can usually tell um, if it's like an Italian sounding name or a Roman sounding name and a lot of the time it's usually Imperials. If it's like one big, uh, long name that usually starts with an A. It's a, uh, it's usually a High Elf, which is why I named this character Adranok. Of course, we have Ancano, we have so many others that I can't think of right now, but there's a lot, especially in Oblivion. Um, let's see, what are Wood Elf names? Usually they're just, like, the classic Elven names, like Phalian or something like that, you know, like, uh, Philendriel or, or something like that. Um, Dark Elves... What are Dark Elves? <gasps> oh, why am I leaving you? You might have a Saber Cat Eye. And there it is. Let's eat it. Delicious. And a Silver Garnet Ring. Wonderful. Um, Dark Elf names... I, I It's like on the tip of my tongue. What their names usually... What the format usually is. But I can't explain it. It's usually like two names, like, it's, oh, it's like some, like, Drulani Veleth is a perfect example. It's like two names, and just like a cool sounding first name, I don't know. I can't explain it well. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to kill you. Do you guys have anything? I forget. Oh yeah, you have Mudcrab, Chitin. Um, or Chitin? I'm not sure. Oh, who are these guys? Are you guys enemies, or what's the deal? What, what's, 
Wow, that sounded exactly like a wolf. Hi, Imperial soldiers. Okay. Um, let's see. Who haven't we talked about? Argonians. What are Argonians? They're usually, oh yeah, they're like the uh, Native American type names, like walks with water, blah, 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 things like that. Or are, yeah, right? I don't know. I, I, I would know if I just had an example of each one in front of me. I'm just blanking a little bit right now. Or, that, or is that Khajiit? Trust me, I know this. It's just like, I can't just talk about it um, on the spur of the moment. But anyways. And Bretons are usually like just normal white people names, I think. Um, all right, inside we go. Here's Volenrude. Let's head inside. Wait, is there a bird floating above? I kind of want to look at a list right now because I really feel like I wasn't satisfactory in, in giving examples of each type of race. I know we missed at least a couple. Well, what else did we miss? Um, um, we might have been all, might have been through all of them. I don't know. I'm gonna stop talking about this. Just know that I do know. Trust me. I, I know the the formats usually. Oh, Nords. Yeah, Nords always have like uh, descriptive names like. Rorsk strong arm or whatever. Obviously, we all know about Nords though because this is Skyrim and all we see in this game is Nords. That's actually something I haven't talked about though. So in this game, in Oblivion is it was much more of a melting pot. You you see like way more of all of the races. One of the things I didn't say was orc. I just realized. Uh, but in Skyrim, it's so rare to come across like certain races like Khajiit. You know they're traders, but other than that, like how many Khajiit do you know? And Argonians, same thing. There's just, like, so many Nords all over the place. And on one hand, I understand why they did it. It's realistic because Nords, uh, the Nords are a very, you know, racist race. They don't like other races, and obviously they're very hardy. A lot of the other races wouldn't want to live in Skyrim. But yeah, anyways, let's move on. Uh, we have Hedix Volenrude notes, and we just started a side quest called Silent Tongues. That is not long at all, so I will read it. I was skeptical, but it's obvious now. The old hymns had truth to them. The relief wasn't far from the entrance, just as they said. I've no doubt now that it hides the entrance to Kven what? Kvenel's tomb. The two keys must be hidden somewhere nearby. Ceremonial replicas of Oaken and Edaj favored weapons when Kvenel went into battle. I don't dare explore further without hiring bodyguards to accompany me, however. To think the tongue chieftain Kvenel could be entombed behind just a few feet of stone, the ancestor we scarcely believed was real. Twice damned for planning this foolish scouting trip. I should have hired those sellswords in the first place. Perhaps there's no need. This place is just a tomb after all, and there are no obvious signs of habitation. It isn't as though the thousand year dead will mind if I had a look around. Except they will, and we know that they will. Um, that quest has nothing to do with the Dark Brotherhood. I always thought it was interesting how they send you here when it's already dealing with another quest. Usually they send you to places that are tied only to that specific quest. So, I always thought that was weird. Uh, we have one of these weird Skyrim versions of shovels and I hate them. It's like, why do they look like that? Why do they look like that? I guess it's bigger so you can shovel more snow. I don't know, but I hate it so much that I'm gonna burn it. Although it's metal, so it can't really burn, but hey, whatever. Alright, so let's go further. Whoa. Oh, I thought you were dead. Well, yet again, you are dead, of course. I, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm just saying I thought you would not animate. That's what I'm trying to say. Alright, so... Over in this direction... By the almighty divines, you've come. You've actually come. This dreadful black sacrament thing. It worked. The Night Mother heard your pleas, Motier. Yes, um, so it would seem. Well, I won't waste your time. I would like to arrange a contract. Several, actually. I dare say, the work I'm offering has more significance than anything your organization has experienced in, well, centuries. Go on. As I said, I want you to kill several people. You'll find the targets as well as their manners of elimination quite varied. I'm sure someone of your disposition will probably even find it enjoyable. But you should know that these killings are but a means to an end, for they pave the way to the most important target. The real reason I'm speaking with a cutthroat in the bowels of this detestable crypt, for I seek the assassination of... the Emperor. So one thing I will say about the uh, Dark Brotherhood questline, I thought that was awesome. They just shot for the stars, like, what? 
What what's gonna be significant in this quest line? Well, why don't we just assassinate the emperor or the emperor? I was gonna say empire, the emperor. Uh, and that's really cool. That's really, really cool. Of course, it remains to be seen if we'll actually be able to do that. But usually in video games, you don't just say something like that and then just go, just kidding, uh, video game players. No, and then they pull the rug from under you. And it's like, it was all a joke. It was a prank. So, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, I remember when I first heard that line, I was like, oh, shit. Do you want us to kill the Emperor of Tamriel? That is correct. What I ask is no small thing, of course. But you represent the Dark Brotherhood. This is what you do, no? You must understand. So much has led to this day. So much planning and maneuvering. Now, it's as if the very stars have finally aligned. But I digress. Here, take these. They need to be delivered to your... superior. Rexus? The items. Rexus? Clap, clap, even though his hands don't move at all. The items. Here. Yeah. The sealed letter will explain everything that needs to be done. The amulet is quite valuable. You can use it to pay for any and all expenses. Is there something else you need? Who are you, Motier? Who are you really? I performed the Black Sacrament, contacted you people, because I thought you guaranteed discretion. Is this no longer so? Why do this? Why have the Emperor assassinated? In the year 3E41, Emperor Pelagius Septim was murdered in the Temple of the One in the Imperial City, cut down by a Dark Brotherhood assassin. His killing ushered in, shall we say, a necessary change in Imperial policy. There are those now who wish for a similar change. I am sorry, but that's all I'm at liberty to say. Well... We'll require significant compensation. Can you pay the price? <laughs> oh, my furtive friend. When Emperor Titus Mead the Second lies dead, there will be gold. A fortune in gold. But so much more. It is said that the Dark Brotherhood in recent years has been in decline. That you lack the power, wealth, and respect of days past. Is it not so? If you do this, if you kill the Emperor, Oh, how the masses will fear and respect you. You can trust your servant to keep this secret? Oh, Rexus is no mere servant. He has been with the Motier family since I was a child. I trust the man with my life. For the life of me, I cannot remember you what- You must deliver those items to your superior. And I, I must get out of this foul place. I can't remember what the guy is called, but there's a guy in Game of Thrones, um, he's in the early seasons, that just has that exact expression, he in fact looks exactly like this guy, and he's like, um, he's a part of the, the royal, uh, guard or something, he's like the high executioner, I forget what his name is, it's not Marin Trant, is it, or something like that? This guy reminds me exactly like him, I'll probably put a picture, uh, in the video, is there so you guys know what I'm talking about. You need? I have vowed to serve Armand Motier until my dying breath. Best remember that. And I believe that guy that I'm talking about had his tongue cut out so he wouldn't talk. Anyways, we have a chest. Let's go ahead and take this. Is this your all's chest? I I'm not sure, and I, to be honest, I don't really care. I have vowed to serve. We'll take this Armand stuff Motier as well. My dying breath. And we could Best actually explore Valenrude right now. There's the Black Sacrament. Um, we'll take that nightshade. And it looks like they also killed all of these Draugr. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, Draugr are not uh, specific to the Elder Scrolls in Skyrim. They're actually like a real thing because Draugr exists. Uh, Draugr existed in the um, Pathfinder D&D style uh, campaign that me and my group are doing right now. It's the first campaign. I talk about it a lot on stream. I'm not going to get into it, but uh, we face Draugr. And of course... That was made way before Skyrim was ever even a thought. Alright, let's head back out. Um, yeah, I was saying we could explore Valenrude and do that quest, but we're going to pretty much stick to one thing and then complete it and then move on to something else. So, the silence has been broken. Deliver the letter and amulet to Astrid. Let's actually take a look at that amulet real quick. Jeweled amulet is what it was called. There it is. Yeah. So, it's worth a thousand gold. And I was gonna say, I thought it was—I thought it just looked like a regular amulet, but no, that uh, design looks very familiar. 
It doesn't look like the Amulet of Kings, though, from Oblivion. I think just the diamond shape, but the middle was like a big ruby for the Amulet of Kings. So I'm not sure if this is if this looks this way for a reason or if they just designed it like this. Uh, but anyways, um, we could also read the letter. However, just a fun little fact. We don't want to do that because Astrid will actually comment that we opened it. Notice that it, it's called a sealed letter for a reason. So we're not going to read it. We're just going to be a good little Dark Brotherhood assassin and head back and show it to uh, Astrid. Not because I don't want to read it, just mainly because I forget what her dialogue is if you don't read it. I also forget if there's ever been a playthrough where I haven't read it. So I want to see how her dialogue changes. Anyways. Hi, Astrid. You're back. Good. All right, so did you meet this Motier? What did he want? Motier wants us... To kill the Emperor. You're joking. Show Astrid the amulet and sealed letter. What's this? The letter explains it all. The amulet is for expenses. By Sithis, you're not joking. To kill the Emperor of Tamriel. The Dark Brotherhood hasn't done such a thing since the assassination of Pelagius. As a matter of fact, no one has dared assassinate an Emperor of Tamriel since the murder of Uriel Septim, and that was 200 years ago. Surely the Night Mother wouldn't misdirect us. No, she certainly wouldn't. And, for whatever reason, she chose to relay Motier's information to you. I don't know exactly what's going on here, if you're the listener, or this is some fluke, or what, but what we now have before us... So we'll accept the contract? <laughs> You're damn right we'll accept it. If we pull this off, the Dark Brotherhood will know a fear and respect we haven't seen in centuries. You think I'd abandon an opportunity to lead my family to glory? But this is all so much to take in. I need time to read the letter and figure out where we go from here. And this amulet. Hmm... What are you thinking? I'm thinking we need that amulet appraised. I want to know where it came from, how much it's worth, and if we can actually get away with selling it. And there's only one man who can give us what we need. Delvin Mallory. He's a fence, a private operator. Works out of the Ratway in Riften. Give me the letter. Bring Mallory the amulet. Find out everything you can and sell it if he's willing. He'll offer a letter of credit. That's fine. Delvin Mallory and the Dark Brotherhood have... <laughs> history. He can be trusted. Okay. Show the amulet to Delvin Mallory. Now, you will directly deal with Delvin if you join the Thieves' Guild. And I was thinking for a split second while Astrid was talking, should I just start the Thieves' Guild? Because we can, like, kill two birds with one stone. Sort of. But... Like I said, I kind of want to just complete everything in a respective guild and then move on to something else. Before we leave, however, I just want to find Nazir and see if there are any more contracts. So he's usually by the table. Still here. What's the matter? Can't handle what I'm throwing your way? Are there any more contracts available? There are, indeed. Three, to be exact. There's Dekas, a shipwreck scavenger. Mirandrew Joe, a traveling caravaner, and Honoriath, a hunter. Tell me about Dekas. He's an Argonian layabout. Likes to scaven shipwrecks. My guess is he'll run it threatened. Or swim, if given the chance. Tell me about Honoriath. The wood elf may run a stall in the city, but he retreats to the plains outside Whiterun to hunt. Kill him there and no one will bear witness. See, that's how I wish all of these were handled. Like, with the orc, there's literally nothing we can do to avoid a bounty if we are not a sneak character. I mean, I talked to the bartender. She talked about him, but she gave me no other options. He only moves to a room that has Nord... Uh, she only... He only... What just happened there? He only moves to a room that has no door. There's, like, no other option. But here, we actually have an option. We can wait to kill him in the woods. Now, I feel like Oblivion was better with this, where you would actually have to find that out, and they don't just tell you that. Like, if you talk to him, he's like, oh, I have to hunt later, and then you're like, oh, I can kill him in the woods. So, yeah, it's just Skyrim's a little bit dumbed down. But, tell me about Mirandru Joe. He's an accomplished wizard. 
and locating him may be challenging as he travels with the caravans. All right. Well, Happy hunting. we can choose to do the big quest and go find Delvin Mallory in the Ratway, or we could do all these contracts. We're going to do all of them regardless. And to be honest, I'm kind of feeling the contracts. The contracts are really fun, just little bursts of fun. And I'm so glad, I've already said this, but I am so glad that they made them each unique and not just, you know, go here and kill this guy and you go there and it's just like Settler and, you know, like the Dawn Guard quests have you do that to go kill random vampires and they're just called like random vampire, pretty much. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the contracts first. Uh, Deacus is going to be by far the easiest. I remember this one. The hard part is getting to him. Not really that it's hard, just that he's kind of completely isolated, which of course is good for an assassin. So we'll travel to Dawnstar, and then we'll make our way over there. I've been thinking of just cutting when we get over there, but or uh, cutting to when we get over there, but a lot of you guys... Oh, I just realized I said one of the Daedric quests was in Morthal, but it's actually in uh, Dawnstar. Why did I think it was in Morthal? I don't know. Anyways, I'm realizing, like, we, we actually do have things to talk about. And the other thing I'm going to talk about as we go towards... Uh, Deacus is that someone told me very early on in the let's play that if we're going to be playing a mage you can put 10 points into magicka and then stop and that is true to a certain extent because if you put a lot of time and effort into increasing your enchanting skill you can eventually make it so that your abilities cost like zero magicka which of course is ridiculously OP and then you really don't have to put any points in magicka at all now, I'm a purist, a uh, perfectionist, which means that... Oh, look at this. Wow, I never, I have never seen this before. So, there's two beds here. There's obviously a lot of food and drink all over the place, some clothes. And then an, uh, an amulet of Mara, which, of course, is the amulet for love, or the the, um, the divine of, of love, pretty much. So, obviously, two people had a lot of fun there. Maybe more than two people. I don't know. Hey, look, the ground's not rendered. Isn't that cool? So, what was I saying? Yeah, so we can stop putting points into magic if we wanted to, if we were going to go down that path of enchanting. Not sure if we're going to do it that way, just because that sounds really hard, and enchanting isn't the easiest skill to put up. Like I said, once you're done getting all of the enchantments, the only way that you can um, increase it... Although, no, I just realized you can actually just make things, just like smithing. So I don't know yet. I'll have to decide if we're going to... Um, Put points into enchantment or put more points into magicka. But here's Deacus. We don't even have to talk to him. We can just fireball him. So that was super easy. And he's got a Debella statue. Oh, he's got some gems over here, which I totally forgot about. Which we can steal because obviously no one's here to see us do it. Did that just... It went off, but it didn't deal any damage to me. Okay. Let's see what you got in this chest, Deacus. I write off these these types of chests immediately after seeing them because they never have anything. They never have anything. Except for Meridia's Beacon. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that is the definition of irony, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll take that. And we'll take a that. New hand touches the beacon. Listen, hear me and obey. A foul darkness has seeped into my temple. A darkness that you will destroy. Return my beacon to Mount Kilcreath. And I will make you the instrument of my cleansing light. So, we have the Break of Dawn, which is going to be a Daedric quest. Uh, dealing with Meridia, and honestly, the reward that we're going to get is not anything that we will ever use in this Let's Play, although it is one of the cooler rewards. Um, but yeah, we're not going to be doing that one anytime soon, but we will be doing it, just not anytime soon. So we're done with that. Let's go kill Anoriath. Where are you, Anoriath? Oh, you're in Whiterun. Okay. So he leaves to hunt, so we should not travel to Whiterun. We should travel to outside of Whiterun, and then just keep waiting until his uh, marker changes. All right, so let's just double check to make sure that he's in Whiterun. He is, and let's also look at the quest description. Who can usually be found at his food stall in Whiterun or hunting in the plains outside the city. Yeah, so I'm not sure when he does this. 
Um, I'm actually forgetting this one entirely, which is really an odd feeling. I remember all of the contracts usually. Like Deacus, I for sure uh, remember. But I'm not remembering this guy. How do I usually kill him? Okay, come on, Anoriath. When we, you gotta go hunting sometime, when do you go, buddy? I guess after the, the stall closes, that would make sense, wouldn't it? So maybe now? No, you still... Still in white run, huh? All right, let's 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 wait two more hours. Still in white run, dude? Okay, now he's inside, so that's he's probably sleeping. Um, if he's not outside here, yeah, I'll just keep waiting until he appears. Well, I can't tell you guys how much I waited for this guy, but he never leaves. I actually had to look it up because he would literally not leave his stall. He goes from the stall that he stands there all day at that stall, and then he goes to the, uh, what is this place called? The Drunken Huntsman, yeah. And then he just sleeps, and then he comes back out and goes to the stall. And I literally waited for, like, five separate days. I just kept hitting back, and then A, to wait an hour each time. He would never, ever, ever go outside. I looked it up, and apparently it's not predictable at all. That's all that the wiki has to offer. So, looks like we're just gonna have to kill him in public, and yet again, go to jail. So annoying. Yeah. Alright, let me have all your stuff. Thanks, thanks. Okay, take me away, guys. Take me away. Stop right there. Oh, that's right. I'm the Jarl Thane. I demand you let me go at once. Oh, forgive me, Thane. I didn't realize it was you. We'll look the other way this time. But even the Jarl's influence has its limits. Be more careful. So I'm pretty sure you can only use that one time. Um, I might be wrong. You, but I know you can't just, you know, keep killing people and then say, No, it's cool, I'm the Thane. No, no, it's cool. And you're just like cutting a child's head off. No, it's cool, I'm the Thane. And they're just like, Oh, I'm sorry about that. Go right ahead. No, um, you might be able to only do that once. I forget exactly what the parameters are. I never do that because I never go to jail ever because I always play sneak characters and this is never an issue. But anyways, Anoriath is dead. We have Marandru Joe, which is where... Oh. Oh, look at that. He's actually right outside of Whiterun, which is where we are right now. Um, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a Khajiit, which means that we're going to have to deal with his whole band of Khajiit, which shouldn't be too difficult. As long as they're isolated and we don't get a bounty, that's fine with me. I uh, We have Fireball. It's an area of effect spell. We also have Unrelenting Force. Of course, we can knock them on their asses, just like Hern and Hurt. So let's see where these guys are. We just traveled outside of the city, so these guys shouldn't be too far, right? Oh wow, they made some they made some distance. It should have taken us that long to simply walk outside of the city. But hey, whatever. We should be able to catch up to them. My stamina recharges. Oh, I think I s Oh, there's a dragon too. There's always a dragon, man, every single time. Okay, well I don't really want to tussle with him, but we might have to uh, he's flying right over me. Usually when your controller vibrates. That's when you know that, uh, oh, they're actually, ooh, we might not actually have to do anything here. Yeah, that could happen. Oh, is he? But he's not essential. We can kill him. Oh, maybe just something else can't kill him. Hey, look, uh, Moran Joe, whatever your name is, I'm, I'm going to hit the, dr uh, the giant. Oops, my bad. I didn't mean to do that. Whoopsie. Sometimes it happens. All right, so we're going to have to use uh, Highborn here. And he'll get staggered every time. So we're fine with this. Although I, my controller is rumbling. So I'm thinking this dragon is going to make an appearance here. Let's also kill all of these Khajiit who are going to attack me as soon as this guy is done. Come on, don't charge it up and then not do it. Okay, giant's dead. Let's see, we got two more enemies over here. One is you. Bye bye. And one is... Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Well, that was satisfactory. That's weird. I've never seen an instance of that where you need to kill somebody, so the game will not let, like, an AI kill them. That's really interesting. All right, let's loot everybody and then end the episode. So, you don't have much. Whoa, we still got something. What's going on over here? I thought I killed you. Um, sorry, what? He's not dying. Interesting. Well, we don't have a bounty. All right, let's loot, let's loot these people and get the hell out of here. Um, butter, yum, yum, yum. 
Okay, we can stop taking these rings. We have so many rings at the moment. Okay, giant's toe. Apparently, giant's toe is a part of a, uh, a recipe that makes a really valuable potion. I think someone said it was uh, giant's toe. Get, come here, come here. Gotcha. A uh, giant's toe and wheat, and apparently you get something really good. So why are you able to, to if live? If you provoke me, I will be forced to unsheathe my claws. Well, May I kind of killed your whole group there, but if you don't feel provoked... That's fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we will return to Nazir and turn in these contracts. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye.